The theory of subversion goes all the way back 2,500 years ago. The first human being who formulated the tactics of subversion was a Chinese philosopher by the name of Tang Tse, 3,500 years BC. He was an advisor for several imperial courts in ancient China. And he said, after long meditation, that to implement state policy in a warlike manner, it's the most counterproductive, barbaric, and inefficient to fight on a battlefield. You know that war is continuation of state policy. So if you want successfully to implement your state policy, and you start fighting, this is the most idiotic way to do it. The highest art of warfare is not to fight at all, but to subvert anything of value in the country of your enemy. Until such time that the perception of reality of your enemy is screwed up to such an extent that he does not perceive you as an enemy. And that your system, your civilization and your ambitions look to your enemy as an alternative. If not desirable, then at least visible. Better read and dead. That's the ultimate purpose, the final stage of subversion, after which you can simply take your enemy without a single shot being fired if the subversion is successful. This is basically what subversion is. As you see, not a single mentioning of blowing up bridges. Of course, Sun Tzu didn't know about blowing up bridges. Maybe there were not that many bridges at that time. The basics of subversion is being taught to every student of KGB school in USSR and to officers of military academies. I'm not sure if the same same author is included in the list of reading for American officers to say nothing about ordinary students of political science. I had difficulty to find the translation of Sun Tzu in the library of a university in Toronto and later on here in Los Angeles. But it's a book which is not available. It is forced to every student in the USSR. Every student who is taught to be dealing further in his future career with foreigners. What subversion is? Basically, it consists of four periods time-wise. If we start from here and go this way, time, right? This is the beginning point. The first stage of subversion is the process which is called basically demoralization says for itself what it is. It takes from a 15 to 20 years to demoralize a society by 15 or 20 years. This is the time sufficient to educate one generation of students or children. One generation, one lifetime span of a person, a human being, which is dedicated to study, to shaping up the outlook, ideology, personality. No more, no less. Usually it takes from 15 to 20 years. What it includes? It includes influencing or by various methods, infiltration, propaganda methods, direct contacts, doesn't really matter, I will describe them later, of various areas where public opinion is formulated or shaped, religion, educational system, social life, administration, law enforcement system, military of course, and labor and employer relations, economy, okay, five areas. Sometimes when I describe all the methods, students ask me question, are you sure this is the result of the Soviet influence? Not necessarily. You see, the tactic of subversion about which I'm talking is similar to the Japanese martial art, Zudo. If some of you are familiar with that tactic, probably you will remember that if an enemy is bigger and heavier than yourself, it would be very painful to resist his direct strike. If a heavier person wants to strike me in the face, it would be very naive and counterproductive to stop his blow. The Chinese and Japanese judo art tells us what to do. First to avoid the strike, then to grab the fist and continue his movement in the direction where it was before, until the enemy crashes in the wall. 